Okay, that is a totally dorky Jake that I adore, and it's uh, it's called um, the Dungannon Sweetheart, written by Graham Townsend for his wife. When I was a kid, uh, growing up in Vermont, I used to go to the Barry Fiddle Contest in Barry, and used to watch Graham Townsend, a frequent guest there, uh, play the fiddle. He was uh, one of the greats, very uh, fancy Canadian fiddling. Uh, and I have great memories of that. He always had a great band, always had a, like an electric bass, electric guitar, drums, fiddle, maybe a guest fiddler. And they bore down. They really, they played some serious, exciting fiddle music. And they also played the dorkiest tunes known to humankind. <laughs> and there's a whole genre of dork out there that I love, because I'm a dork. Um, and Dungan and Sweetheart, I'd say, is about as dorky as it gets. It's also a gorgeously wonderful bouncy tune. Great for dancing. I'm going to teach to you. It's in C. It's a little tricky, but we got this, right? Sharon Shannon actually recorded it, and uh, they're a great Irish accordion player, and she recorded it in D and sort of made up her own version a little bit. Um, this is, this is uh, what I got from Graham Townsend himself. That's the beginning. A uh, heavy arpeggio thing. Uh, so starting on the low, it's in the key of C. Uh, starting with an open G note going to that 5th fret C on your end. Up to that 7th fret of the A string. do that much. Depending on that F natural, because that is the G7 chord. It's gone to the G7 at that point. This is the G7 chord that I like to play. Middle finger at the fourth fret of the G string. Index at the on the F, the third fret of the D string. And then ring finger on the D note of the A string, the fifth fret. So, beginning. Yeah. Arpeggio fast. It's like this tune is brought to you by the arpeggio. Let's up. Let's do that much. Everything's a setup for the next idea. It's this cascade of, of notes. part I guess it's not that bad um, it just is rangy on, on your fingers and it really covers it covers it covers a lot of space let's take that beginning again that's a big ring playing arpeggio. Okay, that's really the A part. That's the whole A part. It, it repeats that idea. There's slightly different ending for both parts. Uh, what was I going to say? Oh, when I play a jig, um, let's just stop for a second, let your brain sort of catch up. 
Uh, I go down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. That's how I pick a G. It's just how I, I learned to do it. So I emphasize da 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 Alternate the whole thing, and that's okay. You, I think you can actually play faster if you do it that way. I, I find myself, I find it difficult to play that, that, play a jig that way. Okay, let's look at the A1 and A2. because I can't see you. Let's do the B part. Oh, and the chords. You can really get away with two chords. So it's an open E. The only tricky part of the tune, perhaps, is that really repetitive ideas in the B part. Yeah, that's kind of weird. Wild stuff here. Again, the tune is brought to you by the Arpeggio, the Arpeggio Foundation of America, of Canada. They love dropping down. It's almost like Graham was playing a mandolin when he wrote this. It's so nice on the mando. And back to that, uh, that first idea of the B part. So it's getting sunny on the camera. And so let's do that B part again. One more. 
good dance tune. Fun to play in the key of C. Great stretch for the fingers. Great uh, practice of arpeggios. Pure dork. Uh, it's nice to back it up with a C6 chord. Add that high A to your C chord. Let's look at another well-worn classic. If you don't know this tune, you have to, absolutely have to, absolutely have to add this to your repertoire, which is the, the tune, The Little Burnt Potato. Um, if you didn't know it, scroll ahead. The Little Burnt Potato goes like this. this tune. It's a terrible, terrible earworm. It's a tune that is fun to play and maybe slightly horrifying to listen to. It's a fantastic exercise. Uh, my kids uh, took violin from an early age. Uh, they, took, they did all the Wolfhard exercises, the Wolfhard books, and the Wolfhard books have these uh, tunes in them. They're exercises and they're not, they're not always that musical. But uh, this one is a uh, is like Wolfhard for the mandolin player. It's it's maybe more musical than some Wolfhard things, but it's a great practice for your pinky and your ring finger, and then you have a dance tune to boot. Little Burnt Potato. So let's check it out. In the key of D. Uh-oh. I'm reaching everything in the key of D these days. Starts on. It goes from an A to a G sharp, back to an A. With that pinky. An arpeggio. I think dorky tunes love arpeggio. All right, that's the first idea. Some that people have a hard time with their pinky. Me, um, you, if you, you know, when I've played this to a few times through at a dance, I might shift to. I shift around a lot. I find as a mandolin player, my pinky gets tired, even on, um, and I, I like to just mess around with my fingering. See how I figured that? I brought it in my ring finger. Middle index. Middle. Yeah, so uh, that's something you might want to do if you're, especially if you're bored right now and you're doing this with a friend. Uh, just practice switching your fingers. Or you can do it with one finger. No, don't do that. It's terrible. Uh, so. Let's do that much. B, C sharp, D. Yeah, that's nice. Satisfying. The end as uh, satisfying as it goes. Five, four, five, seven, five, three, two. All right, that's basically the whole A part. Chromatics, arpeggios, um, the whole nine, nine yards. The whole, the whole work. Sorry. Let's do it. Let's do it together. One, two, ready, go.
I love how it starts with that. It starts up with that chromatic over and over again, like a carnival ride. Do that whole A part again. If you already know it, play a harmony. Play it either high up or low down. That is the A part. The good news about this tune is the B part is very much a rest from the A part. The B part lets up considerably for about five seconds. It just hangs out in that F sharp and A note. Or the F sharp on the E string. I think the melody traditionally is Yeah, you think it's going to do an, a, a, a weird chromatic thing, but it doesn't. So, but how I play it is a little differently than that. I've just uh, my playing has evolved, evolved um, into this simple right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Actually, it, it gets hard right after that. I lied. It's the hardest part of the whole tune after that. What was I thinking? Oh, great exercise. G, B, A, G, F sharp, E. So instead of an arpeggio, it's just a monstrous reach. Again, B part ready of Little Bird to go now. From the top, then kicks right back into that very memorable earworm chromatic thing on the E string. I think this tune is amazing. I think it's elegant and horrifying all at once. Two, three, four.
actually between the two tunes. Yeah, that, yeah, it's ugly, but uh, they, those tunes deserve each other. The chords, no real chord surprises in the Little Burn Potato. minor, the E minor. Finger it that way. Uh, little burn potato, practice one, run, two, ready. fun dorking out on those tunes. Thanks for hanging with me. Uh, wish I was in Vermont with you. What can I say? Um, have fun. <laughs>